So this is something that I know that the organizers of today's event want to talk to you about and will be talking to you about. And I'm sure you've heard them mention this idea of a volunteer management system. What I've put up here is what I tend to use as the key elements of volunteer management. And some of what's up here is going to very clearly look to you like personnel management. But each of these things is important. It's planning, designing work, recruiting, nothing here that you haven't seen before. But when you look at it in its entirety, you realize that you can't assume all these things are in place. For example, the top of the second column says coordination. Again, when you've paid staff, all of whom work full time or on a certain schedule, you know when you can meet people. The problem with volunteers is some of them come in Tuesday, only on Tuesday. Some of them come in when the moon is full. Some of them come in when they feel like it. So coordination becomes something that is a, a, a special task. And the record keeping and reporting and all is part of it. So this is. These are the types of things that we mean when we talk about a volunteer uh, management system. What I want to make the point of, though, is just as it takes a village to raise a child, it also takes a whole organization to welcome and support volunteers. It's really critical that there is someone in charge, but in truth, everyone has a role to play. And you can't just say, oh, oh, volunteers, yeah, they belong to that person who sits at that desk. That's never going to work. This means that there needs to be resources allocated to volunteers. Those of you, we don't have a whole lot of executive directors in the room, but several of you did raise your hands. And I will say that just as if you have a fundraising staff, if you're the top executive, you still talk about money and just if you have a, vol a human resources director, I promise you, you still talk about your employees. Well, it's the same thing here. If you have a volunteer resources manager, you are not off the hook of talking about volunteers because they're part of the mix of who, who you have involved with you. And also to understand that it does take staff time and staff needs to know about that. In this case, this is sort of a laying out the, the point of view I have, because what I've really been asked to talk about is this question of impact, or another way to look at it, especially we have people from Ernst & Young and, and uh, here, is there a high return on investment from involving volunteers? And the real question that I want to spend the rest of the time talking about is, how will you know, how will everyone know? when the work of volunteers is making a real difference. Not just busy work or activity, but mattering to somebody. This matters because you have to meet goals and because your organization has put resources to this. It also matters because for volunteers, the most motivating thing we can do for volunteers, the best thing for both recognition and for further recruitment is to demonstrate to them that they're having an impact. That's what they want to do. That's why they're giving their time. So it's a really critical question. And I want to put a warning up. I have a time bomb here on the screen. The warning is, because unfortunately you will see it over and over again, you cannot demonstrate impact by telling me how many volunteers you have and how many hours they serve. It tells me nothing. Those are inputs, and they're meaningless unless I know what the outcomes are. Because you can have people putting in hours and hours of work, and if they don't accomplish anything, you're wasting their time not accomplishing something. So I'll get back to this point as we go. The first important, and this, if you remember with the volunteer management system elements, I want to make the case for beginning with solid work design. Now, I will say, and thank you to um, Elaine for sending it to me, is uh, Nurul Holda Rahim, I'm sorry if I've said that name wrong, is that person in the room? Nurul Holda Rahim? Yes? Did I, did I get your name somewhat right? Uh, you, did, you did great, but you can just call me Nurul, it's a lot easier. Okay. Uh, but
but thank you for sending in your questions. You were one of the people, one few people who sent a question in, and you had asked one of your first question was, how can we effectively measure the impact of what you called ad hoc or one-off volunteers when an organization mainly engages with volunteers on a one-off project or event? And I'd like to say that this slide that I'm about to talk about is as equally relevant to that as is what I would say about ongoing uh, continuing assignments. The fact is that it is critical for everyone's sake that the volunteer roles you address create address real needs. I don't mean that they get work done. I mean that when you bring in volunteers, you're asking yourself, who is it that benefits from the activity that they're going to do? What needs to happen is you need to ask yourself, we know what our mission is as an organization. So maybe you're trying to um, find a cure or a treatment for autism, or maybe you are trying to make uh, the life of seniors more enjoyable and comfortable. That's your mission. The question is, what's your organization planning to do this year, right now, to tackle part of that, because the mission is a forever goal. You know, you're not going to immediately reach your mission. You're going to take it in steps. So what are today's priorities? What are the objectives and goals that you're working on right now? It's those same things that you ought to be making volunteers work on. It, they ought to be aligned. I'm going to talk about the new book we just put out, and that's one of the key elements, aligning with the mission. In too many organizations, volunteers started doing something 30 years ago, and they're still doing it 30 years later. The organization has gone off to do a lot of other things, but volunteers are still doing, and why? We ask why are they doing it? They like doing it. The real issue is, though, we haven't challenged them on the fact that that may not be what is still needed. The other important point here is while every good involver of volunteers listens to the skills that people are offering, pays attention to what kind of expertise comes in that you didn't expect, but please don't create volunteer assignments to make volunteers happy. That is not useful, and you're wasting their time when you do that. If, it's, if they're offering to do something for you that you do not, um, can't really utilize, then you are much more, doing much more for the culture of Singapore, for the individuals involved to say, you know, that's such a good and wonderful skill. We can't utilize it properly, but let me help you find some place where you can. It's much better to redirect people on that. You are not required to take every single thing everybody offers you, and you can, in a positive and good way, have some demands, if you will, of what you want of volunteers. Why is that okay? Because you have a mission, and you have a goal, and you can expect that the people who want to volunteer with you want to be part of that. So it begins with just feeling assured that when people come forward, they want to know what they can do that's the most important thing they can do. Once you've developed those assignments, and whether and, and that's even true for a single day of service, all too often what happens is someone comes to us and says, I've got 10 people from our, from our business, and we want to send 10 people to you. What can they do for you? So we run around, and we try to figure out what 10 people can do. I can tell you that mostly that has very little impact. Now, we, that's why we end up with something like we need to have the, uh, the auditorium painted. You want to paint the auditorium? Okay, we'll get the painting done. There at least it's we needed the painting. Did the painting get done? Yes, it did. Okay, fine. But you know, there are many things that people can do and we need to be prepared with, if you will, a wish list of what are the things that if we had an offer, what can somebody do? And it's going to be different for every organization. And you may want to ask me some questions about that in a bit. But once you have defined what you want to do, please spend time recruiting the right people. 
I really don't care how many volunteers you have if they aren't the right people to do the things you need to have done. They may be lovely people. They may be people I'd like to spend time with, but they're not going to have an impact for you if they're not capable of doing what you need. So don't just bring somebody on board because they have a pulse. Just because you're alive doesn't make you a valuable volunteer. What you need to do, and this means do not send out recruiting messages that say, wanted volunteers. Think about it for a minute. If Energize, my company, was trying to find a new employee, would I put an ad in the paper or these days on an online registry of jobs? And would I say, we're looking for employees, employees wanted. That would be really weird, wouldn't it? What's the first thing you'd ask me if I said employees wanted? To do what? Why do we think anyone understands what it means when we say wanted volunteers? That's like saying wanted unpaid people. <laughs> You're right, it's not exactly motivating. So what you want to do is have time, you want to say we need people who will be uh, uh, mentors to young children with autism. We're looking for um, uh, people who, I don't know what the Rainbow Center does, but for help with the activities at the Rainbow Center. I'm trying to pick names off the list here so I'm relevant to you. But the point is that you're trying to find people who actually are interested and able to do the things that you need to have done. This means targeted recruitment. Where you look for someone who likes working with a child with autism is not necessarily going to be the same place you're going to look for someone who wants to coach um, young people in, in a sport. They're not going to be the same people. They're going to be found in different places. What's also important is don't settle. We can sometimes be so desperate to recruit that we'll take the first person that finally comes forward. I must tell you that if you take someone less qualified or who really doesn't want to do the work, you will spend the rest of your time dealing with the fact that you don't have the right person there. It's better to live with a vacancy for a while. And the other thing is to aim high. You know, again, fundraisers go to the richest people to find the money. A volunteer recruiter should go to the most qualified people. And if you think first as to, let's see who's sitting around doing nothing we could ask. That's where you get to retired people who aren't working. That's where you get to people who are home. You're not asking yourself, who is great at this that we can ask? You should be not just talking to the secretary in an organization, but getting the top managers to consider volunteering. When you go to the university, don't just ask students to volunteer, ask the faculty. If you aren't aiming high, then you are not sent, you are, you're making it clear that you don't expect the volunteer assignment to do that much because you're looking for just anybody to do it. So I hope what I'm getting through to you is that there's a mindset involved in this. It's not simply a matter of you do this and then impact comes, it's the way you approach it and look at it. The next thing is to be ready. And that means that volunteer management system laying a foundation for volunteer success, that you have a process for interviewing and screening and matching to the role, that you have induction and training opportunities, and that there's a support plan. 